Madison Square Garden to an interesting game between Stephen F. Austin and Northwestern State. Shout out to my guy, Patrick Netherton, the voice of the Northwestern State Demons. All right, interesting that this is a Northwestern State home game. They are getting 12 at home. First year coach Rick Cabrera, I believe it is, at Northwestern State. They've had three coaches the last three years. Their uh, first-year coach last year got another job somewhere else, and Cabrera has come from junior college. I know this because Patrick gave me the intel. Uh, Shout-out to him. Uh, 146.5 and a half is our total with the 12-point line. Corby Craig, we're coming to you for an official play on a Monday. What is it and why? Yeah, I'm going to fade this Northwestern State team. I, this is a team that turns over basically everything. Uh, you see a team... First season coach, they lose Marcus Sharp. If you watched Northwestern State games last year, that was their whole team. Uh, they also lose Jamari Black, 15 and a half points a game. They lose, they lose three double digit scores. Now they start basically four guys who haven't played college basketball uh, in a, a major enough level. And uh, in, in the basketball almanac quotes, shout out Matt again. Uh, they 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 say. Literally, we're going to try to play positionless basketball. Like, we don't have uh, a true center. We don't have a true point. We we want to be able to play positionless basketball. The issue here, you're going against the Stephen F. Austin team. I, 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 in looking back at this, I was like, man, this it, this just feels like a Stephen F. Austin team. This kind of dominated the the ranks of where they're at for the last few years. They've won 20 plus game and 12 of the last 16 seasons. And wow, not really surprising when you hear it. Like, it seems like well, this team has been on the maps kind of since. Uh, I've watched basketball, and uh, they're, they're off a game versus Middle Tennessee. They didn't look great. Uh, they lost in overtime to a pretty decent Middle Tennessee team. I, I think that in most cases they shoot better than they did in that game, and uh, and they're able to get it done. So I think it's like a good bounce back on the road in a Northwestern State stadium that I just give it absolutely zero home court advantage to. Um, and I, I think you're getting a better number because of that, and I don't really worry about them being on the road. So even Stephen F. Austin, this is a team that's going to shoot uh, basically – all primary two pointers, so I'm not too worried about like the the gym differential. Um, and then they dominate down low, they dominate basically every position and, and get this done. So if give me Stephen F. Austin minus the 12 uh, versus Northwestern State here. He will lay them uh, for Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin interestingly played North American. That's the name of the school, also the name of a continent. Apparently, Matty Cox, they did not play the whole continent, but they did beat North American. Then, as as, uh, Corby mentioned, they lost an overtime game at Middle Tennessee State. All right, he's laying a big number there. Any thoughts on the handicap? Well, yeah, no shame in losing at Middle Tennessee. I mean, no one wins at Middle Tennessee. I think their record at home the last few years is something, uh, a big number to a small number. So, um, you know, overtime, tough defeat there. This is a good Jacks team, as Corey mentioned. I mean, they're kind of just always – not maybe underrated, but I think under the radar. I mean, this is a program that's been good even before Red Underwood. It's been good since Underwood had a couple of down years that really was injury-driven. Uh, I think uh, Kyle Keller's tremendous. I think he does a great job. And the way his teams play, it's not fun to lay points with them because they can miss free throws, they can turn it over, but, man, they can turn you over 30, 35 times, especially against poor teams that don't have ball handlers who have seen this type of pressure. Now, you mentioned Cabrera coming from a high-end JUCO. You see plenty of pressure in JUCO, but you don't see the kind of pressure that SFA is going to roll at you. Uh, the type of pressure that's actually given power conference teams is in the past. So I do think this is sort of a, a deer in the headlights situation for Northwestern State. I think I agree with Corby on the spot here. All right. Interesting for Northwestern State. They did play Tulane at Tulane. They lost by 17 for what it's worth. Corby says, I see double figures. I'm laying double figures with Stephen F. Austin in the game with Northwestern State coming up on a Monday night. Again, thank you for finding us. Hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed. We're here Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. You can count on us to whatever extent you can count on me. Count on the handicappers. Hit that subscribe button. Be here 11 a.m. Monday through Friday, all the way through March, all the way to the final four in Glendale, Arizona. We look forward to all of that. All right.